Today, we are talking all things Strength Build. Now, we've got a lot of info to cover and no time to waste, so let's get to it. Oh man, folks, I gotta tell you, I absolutely love Seven Days to Die. And one of my favorite aspects of Seven Days to Die is just how customizable the game is. It allows the player to play however they want. So today we're going to go over one playstyle in particular. This character build turns you into a walking tank. You will be full steam ahead, smash mouth, straight in the face of the zombie jerks. Of course, I'm talking about the strength build. I'm going to go over all the attributes, perks, skill books, and equipment you need in order to build yourself an effective strength or tank character. So first, let's take a look at the attributes and perks that you will need. In my opinion, a good build in Seven Days to Die should focus on no more than three attributes. You have your primary attribute, your secondary attribute, and your tertiary attribute. The primary attribute for this build is, of course, strength. This is where you're going to focus the majority of your points in the beginning. Since we're trying to create basically a walking tank, strength is going to be your go-to attribute. This attribute gives you bonus headshot damage and a greater chance to dismember with shotgun clubs and sledgehammers. Once you get strength all the way up to 10, you will deal 300% headshot damage and have a 50% greater chance to dismember. Now, let's take a look at the combat perk in the strength attribute. Strength is by far one of my favorite attributes in Seven Days to Die because it governs three of my favorite weapons. You have Boomstick, which covers shotguns, Pummel Pete, which covers clubs, and Skull Crusher, which covers sledgehammers. Now, when creating any build, again, it's also important to have a primary weapon and a secondary weapon at least. You might want to throw in a, a tertiary weapon as well, but as long as you have a primary and a backup, you should be okay. For a strength build, I would recommend one melee weapon as your primary, and of course you'll need that shotgun as your secondary. So let's start with the melee weapons, since those are going to be our primary weapons. You could choose Pummel Pete or Skull Crusher. I don't think it's necessary to do both, just choose one or the other. They are both excellent choices, however my favorite is the club. The steel club, in my opinion, is one of the best weapons in Seven Days to Die. So for this build, we're actually going to concentrate on the Steel Club and Pummel Pete as our primary weapon. Each level of Pummel Pete increases the amount of damage you do with clubs, increases the amount of damage you do to stunned enemies, and also increases your chance to knock foes back down with power attacks. At level 3 of Pummel Pete, you also gain an extra little perk. Landing 5 successive hits in a short time causes the last blow to do 100% extra damage. Get this bad boy all the way up to level 5 and you'll be dealing 50% more damage. Your attacks do 200% more damage to stunned enemies and power attacks have a 100% chance to knock foes back down. And that bonus perk means that every 3 successive hits, you do double damage. Now, let's take a look at Boomstick. This is the perk that will govern your secondary weapon, the shotgun. Each level of Boomstick increases your damage, increases your fire rate, and increases your reload speed. Boomstick also gives you the ability to stun enemies for longer and increases your chance to dismember. At level 5, you'll be dealing 50% more damage, have a 50% faster fire rate, and a 30% faster reload speed. Next up is Sexual Tyrannosaurus. This perk is an absolute must for any type of build that includes melee. It reduces the stamina cost for attacks with your melee weapon. At level 2, it also starts giving you stamina every Every time you kill a zombie jerk. Get this bad boy up to level 4 and you'll reduce the stamina cost for regular attacks by 25% and power attacks by a whopping 50%. Killing blows will grant 30 stamina. And the last perk we want to take a look at in the strength attribute is heavy armor. Now this one is hit or miss. It's take it or leave it. Take it if you can. If you can't, don't worry about it. It's not the most vital perk in the strength tree. It's much more beneficial to concentrate 
concentrate on your weapon perks and sexual Tyrannosaurus. Heavy armor is going to be much, much lower on the list. That's because, unfortunately, heavy armor does not affect armor rating. All it does is decreases the penalties for wearing heavy armor. But those can be negated with other things. So it's really not very beneficial to put points into the heavy armor perk. But if you have points to spare and you want to go ahead and throw points into heavy armor, not a problem. You will reduce the armor movement speed and stamina penalty by 25% and uh, improve the durability of your armor by 200% once you have this maxed out. Now let's move on to the secondary attribute for this build. That attribute is Fortitude. This attribute is extremely important for this type of build for one main reason. Since you're going to be smash mouth up in the face of the zombie jerks, you're probably going to be punched in the face quite a bit. So it's important to get your Fortitude attribute up there in order to absorb that damage without too many negative consequences. The first perk you want to take a look at in the Fortitude attribute is Pain Tolerance. This perk reduces the HP loss and lessens the chance to get stunned. Once you get this bad boy up to level 5, you reduce HP loss by 25% and you have a 0% chance to get stunned. You will never get stunned once Pain Tolerance is all the way up to level 5. Next up we have Healing Factor. This perk is vital. It allows you to heal over time and it makes your critical injuries heal much faster. Once you have this maxed up, you're beginning one health every six seconds and your critical injuries heal twice as fast. Very, very important for a tank-like build because as I said, you're up front and close and personal with the zombie jerks. They're going to be smacking you in the face. You are going to take damage. It's important to be able to heal that damage and if you get a critical, being able to heal that bad boy twice as fast is excellent. And the last part we want to take a look at in the fortitude attribute is rule one cardio this i think is an important perk for almost any build this allows you to increase your stamina regen while sprinting if you start to get overwhelmed and you need to turn around and run away or put some distance between you and the zombie jerks rule one cardio is key get this bad boy up to level three and it will increase your stamina regen by 30 percent when sprinting this will allow you to put some distance between yourself and the zombie jerks heal up if you need and then head back into the fight there is no shame in beating a strategic retreat every now and again so take rule one cardio in order to get yourself away from the horde of zombie jerks if you need to and the tertiary attribute for this build is agility and the main perk that we want to focus on is Flurry of Blows. This perk is absolutely awesome for the Steel Club. Initially, it only increases the attack speed for your one-handed melee weapon, like the Steel Club. However, if you get this bad boy leveled up all the way to level 3, not only do you get an increased attack speed, but you also get that kill bonus. Once again, you'll be gaining 30 points of stamina by killing a zombie jerk. Couple that with Sexual Tyrannosaurus, and you'll be gaining 6 stamina every time you kill a zombie jerk. That pretty much means you will never have to worry about stamina ever again. Now let's take a look at the book series that you should concern yourself with in regards to a strength build. The first book series we want to talk about is Batter Up. This book series is absolutely vital if you are planning on using the club as your primary weapon. First, because volume 6 actually gives you the ability to craft a steel club. Up. And the completion bonus is insane. Power attacks that kill your enemies refill your stamina meter. So pretty much that's like Sexual Tyrannosaurus and Flurry of Blows on steroids. This bonus allows you to power attack over and over and over again and never have to worry about stamina. The Batter Up book series is awesome. The next book series we want to look at is Shotgun Messiah. This book series gives you some awesome perks for your shotgun weapon, your secondary weapon, but it allows you to deal more damage, 
You can learn how to craft AP rounds, and the completion bonus allows you to bulk craft shotgun ammo, which will save you a ton of resources. The next book series you wanna be on the lookout for is Urban Combat. There are a couple of books in the Urban Combat series that are incredibly important to the strength build. First, you wanna be on the lookout for Urban Combat Volume 2. This gives you the ability to craft cigars. A cigar will increase your strength attribute by one while you have it equipped. The next book is Urban Combat Volume 6. This is extremely important with regards to a strength build because armor doesn't slow you down in combat. Unfortunately, heavy armor is heavy. So in combat, it can slow you down and make it a little harder to fight. But with Urban Combat Volume 6, it negates that movement penalty while you're in combat. Very important book to find. Now let's take a look at the equipment you're going to need for a strength build. Let's start off with the armor. As you can see here, my character is wearing heavy armor. This is because a tank build is all about damage mitigation. You're not worrying about noise level or mobility or stamina, all you're worrying about is mitigating as much damage as humanly possible. So for that, you are going to want heavy armor. Now I've got myself a full set of steel armor, and I went with the SWAT helmet instead of the steel helmet, just because this face, folks, it's just too pretty to be covered up by a steel helmet. I mean, look at this. Look at that, you can't even see my pretty face. No, 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 that does not work. We need the SWAT helmet. Ah, much better, you can see my gorgeous face. Now this is the tier three armor. Steel armor and the SWAT helmet are tier three. So in the beginning, you're gonna be on the lookout for scrap armor, and then tier two is iron armor, and finally tier three is the steel armor. But if we take a look at my character stats, his armor rating is 85. That means that he is mitigating 85% of the damage dealt by the zombie jerks. So if a zombie jerk were to happen to hit you for 100 points of damage, which none of them actually can, but we're just going to use that as an example, our character would only take 15 points of damage from that 100 because 85% of that is going to be mitigated by our heavy armor. Heavy armor is a must for this type of build. Remember, it's all about about damage mitigation. You don't have to worry about the stamina, mobility, and noise. We don't care about noise. We want the zombie jerks to wake up and come and fight us. This is a smash mouth, in your face, straight ahead, forward as fast as you can type of build. So noise level doesn't mean anything to us. All we want is the heavy armor rating. We want that damage mitigation, so make sure you go with heavy armor. As far as weapons are concerned, like I said, this build is going to concentrate on the steel club as our primary weapon, but you can choose the steel sledgehammer as your primary if you prefer. I wouldn't, like I said, I would not go with both. I would pick one or the other as your primary and then go with the shotgun for your secondary. So we've got our steel club and our sh auto shotgun all set up and good to go. Those are the weapons you are going to want to look out for. Get yourself a steel club as soon as you can. Get yourself an auto shotgun as soon as you can or if you can't find the auto shotgun, pump shotgun is pretty good as well. And in the very beginning of the game, even the blunderbuss counts as a shotgun. So that would not be a bad weapon at the very, very beginning of the game. But for our purposes, we are going to get ourselves a level six auto shotgun and a level six steel club. Couple of more pieces of equipment that I want to point out. I am wearing the cigar, which gives you a plus one to strength. Also gives you a 10% boost to bartering, which is pretty sweet. And then I also have the tough guy glasses. That increases our fortitude by plus one. Remember, fortitude is our secondary attribute, so being able to boost that up is a, definitely a good thing. So be on the lookout for some tough guy glasses and the cigar. The cigar you can either purchase from the trader, or if you found yourself Urban Combat Volume 2, you can actually craft the cigar. But get your hand on a cigar and get your hands on some tough guy glasses as soon as you can. That way you 
you boost those attributes without having to spend the points. Very awesome pieces of equipment indeed. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now that we've gone over the attributes, the perks, and the books, let me go ahead and build my ideal strength character, and we'll get out there and demonstrate this bad boy in action. There we are, ladies and gentlemen. I've got my attributes and perks all selected, so my ideal build can be reached at level 60. This will take 64 skill points, so the four from the beginner quests and then 60 more from leveling up. So at level 60, you can have yourself an unstoppable tank that'll just smash through the zombie jerks. So as you see, I've got my strength up to level 10. We actually only had to go to level nine because of the cigar. It gave us the extra point to get to level 10. We've maxed out Boomstick, maxed out Pummel Pete, and maxed out Sexual Tyrannosaurus. You'll notice I did not put any points into heavy armor. Again, this perk is not really necessary. If you have the points, go ahead and add it in. Great. If not, don't worry about it. You really do not need this. The only real benefit is the durability. Everything else can be solved in other ways. In Fortitude, I've got this up to level 10. Once again, up to level 9. Because of the tough guy glasses, that gives us the extra point we need to unlock level 10 without having to spend those last three skill points. We have pain tolerance maxed out. Healing factor is maxed out. And rule 1 cardio is maxed out. And then in agility, we have agility up to level seven and flurry of blows up to level three. And as for book series, I went ahead and got myself all seven books in the batter up series. We have all seven books in the shotgun Messiah series and urban combat. I gave myself volume two and volume six. And that is pretty much all you need to create a very effective and awesome strength build. Now, before we head out and demonstrate this build in action, I did want to take this opportunity to say, if you find this video helpful and or enjoyable, join the Sav Nation by clicking that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you do not miss a single one of our tutorial videos. I release videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern. But now, let's get out there and slay some zombie jerks. And what better way to demonstrate the effectiveness of this build than raiding the Shotgun Messiah Factory. Oh man, folks, this is gonna be awesome. So we've got our club, we've got our shotgun, I've got uh, some shotgun shell. I went ahead and put my sledgehammer away because like I said, we focused on the steel club for this build. We're gonna head inside and slay us some zombie jerks. Let me show you how awesome this build actually is. All right, so we are not going sneaky, we are not going quiet. We are going loud and proud, right, straight, smash mouth style, straight into their stupid zombie faces. So wake up, you zombie jerks. Come out and fight. Hey, mama. Boom. Ha <laughs> ha. Boom. Sent the janitor flying. Ha <laughs> ha Love it. You'll notice every time I kill a zombie jerk, stamina meter goes up. Awesome. Come on out, janitor. How you doing, buddy? <laughs> Boom! Smash mouth in your face. Once again, right there. We got hit. No problem. Because we have the healing factor perk, we can actually take the punishment. He did a whopping two damage to us. But no problem. Boom, boom. Keep on smashing. Boom, boom. Dead. We have yet to have to bring out our shotgun. This is strictly with the club. And we're not sneaking around. We're not going slow. We are just smash mouth straight ahead. All systems go. Boom. Smack them in the face. And if they get an occasional hit in on us, no worries. We take next to no damage. And with healing factor, we get that damage healed up in no time. Hey, buddy. How you doing? Ooh, you were doing a lot better a few seconds ago. <laughs> Man, lots of janitors in this, uh, in this POI. Ooh, you did. <laughs> I love it. Oh. Hey, wake up, buddy. Come say hello to my club. And we keep on moving. Oh, we got some radiateds. And we got a soldier who's stuck behind the door. Hey, Mo, how you doing, buddy? Nice to see you. Ooh, sorry about smashing your balls with my giant steel club. <laughs> Not sorry at all. Not sorry at all. Oh, no, we took damage. What are we going to do? <laughs> We're going to keep moving forward and smashing some zombie jerks in the face. 
All right, so now we've got kind of a, a little bit of a crowd. Let's go ahead and pull out our shotgun. Do a little crowd control here. We didn't really need to. I mean, we could have probably taken care of them with the, uh, with the club. But I want to show the shotgun off as well. All right, switch back to the club. We just slayed a whole crap ton of zombie jerks. And let's move on up. We've made it to the main loot of the Shotgun Messiah. Took a little bit of damage, but it was nothing. We were at no point was I concerned, was I worried that I was going to, uh, I was about to be overwhelmed and die. Even when we were completely surrounded by zombie jerks, most of the time I didn't even have to pull up my shotgun. Just stuck with the club, smashed them all in the face, and oh baby, look at all the goodies that we can now loot. Absolutely awesome. Now again, I would recommend bringing on, bringing uh, uh, some, some healing supplies. I did go ahead and take a little bit of uh, antibiotics just to get rid of the, the infection because that just annoys me. But the other stuff, yeah, we've got a, a banged up knee for, you know, 57 minutes. We're fatigued. We could take some painkillers, get rid of that. Take a first aid bandage or, or a med kit and get rid of the skin knee. But uh, all in all, guys, no problems whatsoever. This demonstrates just how awesome the strength build can be. We cleared out the, almost this entire POI in just over an hour. That is insane. That is how awesome the strength build actually is. This is a tier five POI and we cleared this bad boy in just over an hour. So if you love the Smash Mouth style, this strength build is amazing. The strength build in seven days to die is awesome. You can smash your way through a whole bunch of zombie jerks and never really have to worry about taking damage. I was able to make my way through that entire shotgun massage factory in just over an hour and at no point did I feel threatened or in danger. Even when I was swarmed, my club and my shotgun were more than a match for those zombie jerks. That is the power of the strength build. I absolutely love it and it is one of my favorite styles of gameplay. Now if your style of gameplay is not really the smash mouth style, never fear folks because I'm creating an entire playlist of unique character builds for Seven Days to Die. If you want to take a look at some of my other character builds and see if you can find one that fits your style of play a little bit better, you can do so by clicking the box in the top right corner of the screen. But for now, this is Savin saying thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining me in Savin's World. And remember, the average gamer is always king of the hill on the bell curve.